What's up, this is Jake with Hike 734, hiking Mount Washburn and the Seven Mile Hole near Canyon in Yellowstone National Park. And um, I got a little shuttle and started at Dunraven Pass, worked my way up to Mount Washburn, then down around, and then all the way down to the bottom of the canyon at Seven Mile Hole, and then back up along the trail um, to Glacier Boulder Trailhead. So anyways, um, the trailhead at Dunraven Pass is awesome. It's an old road um, that goes up to um, the lookout and it's just really cool because you start out in the Alpine so you start out with views and I love my views and uh, so it's just great to walk along there. Lots of people walk that so it's, it definitely is a busy trail so just kind of know that um, going into it. and. Um, yeah, just as you start working your way up, you obviously the views keep getting better and better of the valley. And um, and then at one point you cross over on one of the switchbacks um, to where you can go ahead and see the road on the other side of Dunraven Pass, which is uh, kind of fun. And then um, gradually it, it works its way up and, and of course uh, you get better views of Mount Washburn, the lookout there. And so that's pretty sweet. And then, um, yeah, there's this one part where you wrap around this really cool point and it's just got amazing views just all the way around. And um, and then from there, you'll it, it switches back and, and it just follows the ridge line, um, basically all the way up to the lookout. And um, just, you know, cool rocks, just cool views. Um, yeah, overall, really super great. I'm just kind of, once again, rambling just to show you more video of it. But um, yeah, once you're up there, definitely a busy place, especially on the kind of day that I've had. And uh, there's just people everywhere. But the views, obviously they put this look out there for a reason and the views all the way around are great. And you can actually see a little bit of the um, smoke from the fires um, when you're looking north, which we are this year, we're having a ton of them over like Montana, Canada, that sort of a thing. Um, but yeah, so just great views. And then from there, um, I drop back down to the junction where there's the Chittenden Road um, access, there's the Dunraven Pass, and then there's the one that goes off towards Seven Mile Hole. And obviously I took that one, which is just this little trail that works its way along the Alpine. And if all the people up there knew that around the corner you would get to see some bighorn sheep, they probably would go. Um, I went a little bit further and um, dropped down into the saddle. And it's pretty dang steep to get down to the saddle. And then it's pretty steep to come back up. But while I was at the saddle, I had seen some people looking across on another ridge and I asked them what they were seeing. And um, they told me they were looking at a bear. So um, I got to see a black bear. They apparently had seen a uh, sow with a cub. So um, who knows? But anyways, cool to see bighorn sheep. Cool to see that and just traverse across that alpine. And then um, from there, the trail is steep. It is dang steep and it just goes down and down and down and it's just in trees um, with a little occasional meadow, but it is really, really steep. <laughs> I don't think I could say that enough and it's kind of rolly rocks on top of it. So definitely um, if, if you're not very good at going downhill on steep stuff, this is not your trail. Um, but yeah, you get into um, some really cool meadows that are still on this, this hill, but this thing takes you, it's about two and a half miles from the trail junction up by the, the lookout all the way down to the bottom and you lose quite a bit of elevation. And finally you get down to the very bottom of it and there's a an old sign. I'm guessing there was like a campsite there or something judging from what I can see, but now there's a sign saying no more bear management area. So anyways, but from there you uh, hop out and just kind of weave in and out of beautiful meadows, super great area really like that area. Um, the forest down there, really, really great. Just that nice open forest that you can look deep into. And um, eventually you break out into this epic meadow that you could see from above. And it just made my heart glad. I, I just love those kind of meadows. You can look back up at Mount Washburn and just see the, see the lookout from there. And yeah, it was just really, really pretty and great. And then from there, it kind of ducks in and out of, uh, it ducks in and out of the forest and, and meadows again. And then finally dedicates itself to some forest action. And it's a uh, forest for quite a ways. And then you start to come, you start to smell some, some uh, sulfur and you happen upon 
um, some thermal areas. Some, there's some really, really cool geothermal areas um, separated by some trail, but one of them in particular was just a bubbling, boiling, black mud, frothing um, craziness. And uh, it was just really cool. I don't know if I've seen a black mud pit, but I'm guessing it's all ground up obsidian or something. But anyways, really cool geothermal area. And you just kind of traverse across that sort of a thing. And um, yeah, then you end up coming um, around and just going into more trees for a while. And um, after a bit of trees, you'll come to a meadow, which you can barely see from the trail. And that is where the junction is for Seven Mile Hole. And I decided to drop down here. This goes all the way down to the Yellowstone River. And so it starts off benign enough on this level little path and then starts to drop. And boy, howdy, this is, I think, almost steeper than the other part and definitely narrower <laughs> the path is. And um, this thing is really cool, white calcite, I'm guessing. And um, yeah, it, it just drops down, gives you a little perspective, and then it opens up a little bit towards the top, and then it just starts switchbacking down like crazy and gives you no real views to speak of for about 500 feet. And then you come to this really, I guess it's just a dormant geyser. It's really a cool looking geyser. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like Lone Star Geyser. And it's just really neat and doesn't look like it's working anymore. And then from there, there's a couple of other potentially dormant uh, geothermal features. But then eventually you pop out into an active geothermal area and you can just tell below there's just a lot of wreckage from that. But there is um, some really cool um, calcite pools there that are just clear and steaming and just really neat looking as well as some dormant cones. And you just work your way steeply through that once again. And down the bottom, there's another dormant cone with a cool little tree on top of it. And then um, you, there's a couple campsites down there. I decided to go left because I thought it would be more gradual to get down to the river. And I'm not sure if it was, it was definitely longer. But anyways, I worked my way through that. And just, you know, when you finally get down to the water, it's great. Getting there's a little bit of, um, you know, at this point I was definitely tired, <laughs> but, but once you get down there, it's really pretty. And um, I just really liked that, that spot. I could have definitely have sat there for a while. There's a little creek that comes into the, the river and just a really cool spot. Some really cool um, hoodoo looking, um, just pink and reds and oranges and whites. It's just really great. But anyways, worked my way back up to the top of the rim and uh, traversed along the canyon. And um, traversing along the canyon is interesting because, um, you know, you spend a lot of it in the trees going up a few times, but mostly generally down. And uh, eventually you come to Silver Cord Cascade. Um, well, it's actually the view from across the um, canyon. And I had actually been at Ribbon Lake and I had seen Silver Cord Cascade, at least the bottom of it just recently, and um, went over to, and from there you just, you hop back in the woods. So you, even though on the map, it looks like you kind of hug the canyon wall, you really spend a lot of time just hiking more in the trees there. Um, and then you'll pop back out again with some cool canyon views, and then you'll be back in the trees again. <laughs> and uh, this kind of uh, thing is a little bit annoying to me because I really like the big epic views, but what can I say? Anyways, but finally you get to this really, really cool look um, that you can just see this white rock with these great features. Um, once again, some trees that are kind of doomed because they're out on these little precipitous um, hoodoos but anyways just really cool looking down on the river looking really great and then um from there the trail it tr just travels a little bit longer on that and then it makes a right hand turn and then heads on over to where i am right now just working my way back to um, the glacier boulder trailhead and um, that's where the road is so that is the end of this journey and it's a pretty big day. Um, I think I, I like the beginning of this trip, this end part, and I definitely like Mount Washburn. Um, the middle part of uh, Seven Mile Hole and then the, the hike down Seven Mile Hole was definitely brutal. It was really cool once I was down there, but anyways, those are just kind of my, some of my random thoughts. But anyways, I'm Jake with Hike 734, hiking Mount Washburn and Seven Mile Hole near the canyon area of Yellowstone National Park. If you like this video, subscribe on YouTube and head over to hike734.com for more goodness.